Good morning. John Gilkison, Aerostealth here. It is Thursday, December 16th, 2021. And this is uh, going to be the second part of my PowerPoint presentation, Aerodynamics, EVs, and Towing with EVs. And this part's going to be uh, devoted to towing. So I'm going to turn it around now. It's going to take a few seconds while I make some adjustments. But here we go. All right, here we are. This is the opening slide. And um, I'm going to have to scroll down here. Um, Till I find the Tesla semi truck, right there it is. Um, I started the slide here on towing because the uh, trucking industry has been towing for over a hundred years, and uh, they've learned a few things. Um, the cost per mile to haul goods, uh, anyone that can do it cheaper. Uh, is going to have a competitive advantage. So they're, they became interested in aerodynamics in the uh, 70s when the fuel crisis hit and everything. Um, so this is a picture of a Tesla semi-truck, but it applies generally to semi-trucks. Uh, one of the things you see here is basically the truck itself is blended with the trailer. So blunt shapes are fine when you're moving through the air, but you don't want a discontinuity or a large gap between the trailer and the tow vehicle. Uh, another thing they do is they put uh, uh, aerodynamic fences along the side here underneath the trailer. And that uh, allows the air connects on this fence and then is guided back around the, the back wheels. Uh, we have a local company, Masia Valley Transit, which uh, <laughs> uses boat tails on most of their rigs. Uh, that's not pictured here though. Um, so I have a question. Why is aerodynamics so ignored in non-commercial trailer towing? I'm going to have to put an ER under, <laughs> and, under for trailer. Uh, so um, Bubba tows, tows his trailer is, uh, to the lake or locally to the job site or whatever. Uh, they seldom have boat tails or sloping roofs of the trailer towards the tail. Non-commercial trailers usually have exposed fenders and wheels, which create extra drag. And non-commercial trailers seldom are sized to the tow vehicle or have gap closures and tow, tow vehicle fairings, fairings to blend the air onto the trailer are practically non-existent. Um, when you're towing a trailer, and this this is all going to apply to ICE or or battery electric vehicles, it makes no difference. Uh, towing a trailer is a split wing problem. You you really need to consider the trailer and a tow vehicle as one thing, not two. But here you have a split wing, and then here you're moving the split wing back. That increases the drag even more the further you move the 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 uh, move it back. So think of that. Next time you see a trailer going down the road, think of the whole unit as uh, as one thing instead of two separate items. Um, here's our Ford F-150 with a Brett Herndon aero lid and boat tail. It's capable of 20 miles per gallon at 80 miles per hour. Now that said, let's take the boat tail off there and then we throw a trailer on as, as high as the cab. Well, that would exacerbate the whole situation. I'd be better off without the aero lid on the uh, truck to tow a trailer. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. But here you have these side profiles of um, trailers uh, being towed. And here's a standard pickup truck. And then here's a 
uh, probably it's either a Tesla Model Y or a Model X. They've done that some of that recently, Model X towing. And then here you have a projected Cybertruck towing a trailer. Out of these three, the worst uh, is probably the, the Cybertruck because the air is organized and comes down here and then comes off the back of the vehicle and slams right into the trailer. It does it slightly less here. And the air is, is so uh, turbulated here that it, the trailer is actually in the shadow of more disturbed air. Um, you kind of have to think of a, a truck as a sedan. Um, the air comes off the cab and it's a sh vortex shedding. It's a, it curls around this way, clockwise from the way we're looking at it. And the air a little bit higher flows over the top of that vortex, the swirling vortex. So it's as if there is a body there. It's just made out of air. You can't see it. And the trailer gap, of course, is, is a big problem here. Um, so, bad, better, best. The bad, the better, the best, right? Uh, Tesla Cybertruck. Here's a Tesla Cybertruck, which someone's put some kind of appliance on to make it go straight from the roof height straight back. This is better. But, if it was created in such a way that it, it actually matched the height of the trailer and could push the air up over the trailer, uh, then it would be even better. Another problem I've seen, especially with the RVs, is they're wider than the tow vehicle also. So the air coming down the sides of the vehicle is a problem. Um, so, by themselves, the additions of fairings will increase drag if you're not towing a trailer. So, here you have a pickup truck, and this is one with a bed cover, presumably, and then this is a cab high camper shell, and then this is a camper shell that's even higher than the, the uh, cab. So, this bottom one would actually be best for towing a trailer, if, if the trailer was as high as that camper shell. Uh, and I happened to run across a picture of a truck like that in Sam's parking lot the other day, so I took a picture of it and threw it in the slide presentation here. Um, so here again, helping the air transition. This is better than this because it's a pushing the air up over the trailer. Um, this gap here is really bad news and something to close the gap. And this happens to be a British idea. They have an inflatable uh, prosthetic here to put on the front of a trailer to help close this gap. And it's soft, so if they got into a turn and they actually the vehicle, tow vehicle, contacted it or something, it wouldn't harm anything. Um, it's just inflated. So, fifth wheel travel trailer is one of the more efficient uh, truck trailer combinations out there and by truck trailer combinations I mean uh, non-commercial uh, my fifth wheel trailer is 9,000 pounds and yet I get 9 miles per gallon and you see the gap is closed quite a bit here and uh, we could use fairings on it uh, definitely we could use a fairing here that would help push the air up over and it would go down the side of the truck and help push it around the trailer also. So it's it's not perfect, but it's better than most trailers because most trailers have a gap between the rear when, when they're tongue pulled and they have a gap between the rear of the truck and it's back here and it's being towed. And so your gap runs all the way from here to here instead of being filled like this one is. And I have some data on that. Um, Basically, what I figured out is I got a hundred square feet of trailer, and, uh, and yet I'm getting nine miles per gallon. It's up to sixty-five miles an hour, and this means the truck itself has a drag coefficient of point four, 
and it gets 18 miles per gallon at 65 miles per hour. So this means the towing combination has to have a CDA of 28.8 and thus it has to have a coefficient of drag of 0.288 uh, or uh, might as well just round it off 0 0.29. It's below 0 0.3. And I was amazed when I got those results. The truck itself only has 36 square feet of frontal area. So it's a CDA, it's important. The truck has a CDA of 14.4, but the truck trailer combination has a CDA of 28.8. So here's some rules for it. And it turns out that the most efficient uh, uh, if you're tilting down the back of a trailer combination in order to reduce the coefficient of drag, 9 degrees seems to be about optimum. And uh, once you go past that, the drag begins to go up. Right right here, these last, last ones. Uh, this is a 30 degree. I can't quite read these. The print's really small. But you... Uh, but anyway, 30 degrees, it's really bad. 9 degrees is about optimum here on drag. Right here, I think it is. Right here. That's 9 degrees. 0.23. So, and then here, 0.287. Shows you the drag of my truck-trailer combination. Of course, there's other factors other than this. But... Adding electric drive to trailers, and by the trailers I mean non-commercial trailers, um, like my fifth wheel, for example, what if it had, let's say, a 20 or 30 kilowatt hour battery pack built into the trailer, and uh, one set of wheels back there had a drive motor, and there was uh, sensors in the tow hitch that knew how much, uh, how many pounds of pole I had. And um, it would activate the motor to reduce the draw weight. And uh, it could be set up to just be used for when you were uh, taking off from a standing stop or you were climbing hills. And then you could use regen when you're going down hills. And you'd have a lithium-ion battery pack for the trailer for camping. And it also could be recharged there. My nine miles per gallon with such a rig here uh, built into it would probably go up to 11 miles per gallon or so simply because of the, it would be a hybrid trailer basically. And I think commercially this could be used also. The Germans introduced this at the, one of their shows on trailers in Germany about a year or so ago. So this is a a cyber truck with an accordion gap closure and of course the trailer itself is designed to continue the flow of the air back down to reduce the vortex shedding or the wake area behind the vehicle. This truck trailer combination would be more efficient than the truck by itself. In other words, let's say a cyber truck had a 500 mile range. With this tow in this trailer it might have six, 700 mile range. Um, if it had batteries in it, it could be even more. You could make a thousand mile range cyber truck. Um, could extend the range by up to 30% hauling uh, battery packs 50% or more. Um, so aerodynamics is of critical importance um, for EVs especially. The um, lower energy density of lithium-ion batteries compared to liquid fuels makes aerodynamics uh, critically important to get the range. Uh, with fossil fuels, because of the high energy density of the fuel, waste is just endemic. Uh, people say, well, it's, it's only going to cost me a mile, two miles per gallon, only reduce my range by X. I can just expand, I can make the gas tank a little larger, that's all I need to do. It's easy fix. Uh, larger frontal areas and tra trailers increase energy costs as the trucking industry has known for decades. So fairings, uh, 
blending the air onto the trailer, boat tails behind the trailer to reduce the wake area and so forth would address the uh, so-called trailer towing problems electric vehicles have. Electric vehicles do not have a trailer towing problem. They actually tow trailers uh, with more efficiency than uh, gas-powered vehicles by far. Uh, what they have is the same problem that uh, gas vehicles have when they're towing trailers, and that's an aerodynamics problem. So there you go. I'm going to call her quits right here, a little over 15 minutes. Um, let's see if we can turn me around here. And there I am. Um, so again, aero stealth uh, means that aerodynamics is hiding in plain sight. And that's why I've given myself that moniker. Uh, I see a lot of auto journalists quote people on YouTube. They'll use the word aerodynamics, and but occasionally they'll make comments that, that just tells you they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they just don't understand this whole road load problem. And the fact is that uh, it doesn't matter what the drivetrain of any vehicle is. It's the aerodynamics and the rolling resistance, and and then with electric vehicles, you might have internal resistance, uh, drive tearing or or standby losses to run the power systems. But other than that, uh, with a gas vehicle, all those numbers are buried in the MPGs. So, but it takes the same amount of energy to to move my gas truck down the road as it would even if it was electric. It's just that the electric uh, motor would be three times, three and a half times more efficient at doing it and wouldn't be wasting all this heat energy. Uh, so there you go. Uh, hope you liked the video. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on down the road. Happy trailering, everybody. Bye-bye.